In episode one of my journey to Southern Pines and Pinehurst, we went back in time. Reading the sands. We met some of the men leading the Sandhills into the future. We're so fortunate to have three original Donald Ross golf courses. And we washed all that down at a local brewery. Does this still count as double fisting? The home of American golf, Pinehurst. I had the pleasure of playing Donald Ross's crown jewel and legendary US Open venue, Pinehurst No. 2, with my friend Abby Liebenthal. Officially, she's the senior manager in championship marketing for the USGA, and now calls Pinehurst home. The community is super welcoming. It, I mean, it certainly has the small town vibe. There's all these activities that people are seeking to go do, and so everyone kind of welcomes and puts their arms around everything that there is to do in the area and that makes it really fun you see familiar faces when you go places you know i go out to dinner there's typically somebody else that i know or at least recognize and for me i love that as for navigating number two i mean it's incredibly challenging but it's like very playful nice you can get into trouble but then you can get out of it let's go great ball <laughs> take it a ride hey Golf is everywhere you look, even if you don't play. And there's plenty of people who live here who don't play golf. I think you just know that's where you are and you're gonna love it, you're gonna welcome it. When you tell people you live in Pinehurst and if they know golf, they're like, oh my gosh, you live in Pinehurst? One, two, seven. Oh, that's better. Southern Pines is such a special community, whether you have military families and friends or you have young families, um, people just really gravitate toward going to events. And, and that's why I love living out here. You know, it's a welcoming place to be. Oh my gosh, we stayed on. Beauty. What? <laughs> well done. She's also a trailblazer in today's game with her startup, For the Ladies. In 2019, I started a nonprofit called For the Ladies, and we introduced women to the game. It started with a simple clinic. I thought, I'll have 20 friends. We'll do a little intro to golf clinic. I have PJ professional friends, and we'll like rotate through different stations. That day, 70 people showed up, and I was like, oh my gosh, like there's something here. And so ever since, we've hosted about 50 events, and these women are so excited to learn. They have really good questions. You can tell that they want to get better. And this is just in a two-hour time period. The folks at Pinehurst allowing us to do that has allowed us to expand and go to even more places across the world. And then I think we try to make the connections, connect the dots between what you're doing on the golf course and how that can help you in your everyday life. So strategy or just like confidence. Oh, come around. Like letting things kind of brush off your shoulder. Getting a lot of bunker practice today. Did it? Sit. How can you then bring that into your everyday life instead? Safe. Good speed. Really good. Walking to get in. <laughs> we try to just connect those dots of this is going to really enrich your life. The more I spoke to women, especially women who don't work in golf, who work in construction or in banking, insurance, and they're like, yes, like there are tons of golf outings that I wasn't getting invited to because they just didn't even realize I played or was interested in it. And so I always try to say, hey, be pretty public with you know, your golf knowledge or that you play. Like, post it on social media so that your colleagues see that you play. Hit it. Oh no. Sit. It's pretty fast. It's a little fast. I love being out on a golf course, being surrounded in golf, playing the cradle, being at a driving range. I just know I feel kind of at home and at peace and welcome or surrounded by friends. And if I can bring that feeling to other women or other people in general, it makes me happy. And I know I'll be really satisfied and fulfilled. Beauty. Nice putt. Thanks. Abby, thank you for hosting us Thanks in your new home. Playing. Yes. That was so fun. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you.
Old Town Pinehurst. Iconic with its brick buildings and southern charm, the Drum and Quill fits right in with its rich family history, rooted within the game of golf. Founder Kevin Drum invites us into his American Tavern for a seat at the classic wooden bar with cold drinks on tap. All right, Kevin, first thing, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Welcome to Old Town Pinehurst. The Drum and Quill, named after my dad and really to represent golf writers as a whole. The Drum stands for my dad, Bob Drum, who's a famous golf writer, and the Quill represents the pen that they use to make the stories that make golfers famous. So I thought it would fit well in the village and be part of the fabric of uh, the home of American golf. And uh, we pretty much pulled that off. How did you guys find your way down here in the first place? My dad worked for the Pittsburgh Press, so he was there covering a 12-year-old Arnold Palmer playing in the Western Amateur Championship, and he covered uh, his whole career, and then he became his publicist and PR guy, kind of like the O.B. Keeler was to Bobby Jones, my dad was to Arnold Palmer. That relationship is hard to explain to people today. The relationship between writers and golfers, they were best friends. They flew together, they hung out together, they stayed together. I would fly on a plane with Arnold and, and his girls, you know, and uh, it was just a different relationship. How many years have you been in this spot? Eight years. Uh, this was a bankrupt business and I bought this pub from the federal government. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to honor my dad, his peers, and golf writers. How has the Pinehurst community evolved over time to where it is today? You know, this downtown looks the same. Looks the same as it did when I was a kid. I mean, there, there's something that stays the same here, even though there's changes. You sound like a golfer yourself, true? Yeah, I, I love the game. It's how we teach our kids honesty and integrity. It's, you know, that's how I learned you know, etiquette. I mean, so golf is much more important here. Golf's about four, four and a half hours without your phone, with your friends, having a good time. And I think we got to get that message out. It's not about playing the game. It's about being there with your friends, undisturbed from all this racket that's going on in life. That's what Peggy Kirk Bell did, right? Go out there, play golf, have fun. Yeah, hit it, hit it again. That's, that, that's what she used to tell me. Hit it, hit it again. Cheers to that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your world with us. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming to the Drum and Quill. If you find yourself in Pinehurst with the sun setting and the itch to play more golf, then the cradle is the spot to kick off the shoes and squeeze in a casual round on hollowed ground. Tom Pashley, president of Pinehurst Resort, steps out of his office to meet us on the first tee along with the Sun Max. Welcome to the cradle of American golf. You got 10 acres, nine holes, par threes. Probably gonna be the most fun you've ever had on a golf course. How long has the cradle been out here? This is year three for the cradle. It was, uh, it was the first thing Gil Hance did when he came to Pinehurst. He and Jim Wagner built the cradle. They asked him, what's the goal? What's the mission? The only goal was fun, you know, have fun. Oh, oh no, I just oh. killed somebody. <laughs> have something that a beginner can enjoy, that a, a scratch can enjoy, kids can have fun on. Oh, a little clanky. Where really there's no intimidation. It takes about an hour. It's $50, kids play for free. So all the things that people say are, are one of the challenges with golf, none of that applies at the cradle. Ugh. How do we come back from a double? We make a birdie. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go. Called it. What would you say the cradle has done for Pinehurst? The, the cradle has taken the intimidation out of coming to Pinehurst. You know, there's so much history and tradition at Pinehurst, and people can sometimes feel a little overwhelmed and feel like you got to be on your best behavior. In the cradle, barefoot, music's playing. A lot of people have a cocktail. You got three clubs in your hand. There's no intimidation. So I think it's really kind of made Pinehurst feel more accessible to everyday golfers. Oh yeah. Nice. Great ball. Good shot. You do know this hole well. I've only birdied it like once in my life and it's because I chipped in. Stay up, stay up. Oh. oh! We're all here celebrating the game of golf, the game that we love. Everything that's great that's happening in the game right now is being celebrated here in this spot. And speaking of access, I mean, this is a prominent spot on the property, right? I mean, it's the first thing you see when you walk up. This is the front doorstep of Pinehurst. The, the historic clubhouse is you know, right over our shoulder. 
I think that's also part of the cool factor of playing here is that you're always able to kind of orient yourself because you go back and look at where the clubhouse is. And golf in Pinehurst started where we're standing. That's why it's called the cradle. This was where golf was born in Pinehurst and where, where now we kind of nurture the game, like you, you nurture what you find in a cradle. Tom, what does it mean to you? You're the president here at the property, but on evenings like tonight, to kind of you know, take the cap off maybe a little bit, come out and play with your son. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's it's great. I, he's, he, I'm not I'm not off limits yet. You know, Dad's still reasonably cool, so he doesn't mind hanging out with me. It is great to be out here at the end of the day in, in the sunset with your son, uh, just you know having a walk on a nine-hole par three course. There's a lot of history here in this whole town, but especially where we're standing over the last hundred years. Looking forward to the next hundred. You feeling good about how it's all set up? What do you think it's gonna look like in the future? Yeah, you know, Pinehurst is not meant to be a time capsule. Pinehurst is always about pushing forward. We don't want people to say, you know, Pinehurst used to be a place that was great where my grandfather used to take me. We wanna be relevant to every generation of golfers. So yeah, as we look out over the next 100 years, knowing that we're gonna have a US Open every five or six years, there's gonna be a new uh, hero for every golf generation to look up to who won a US Open at Pinehurst. We feel really good about where things are heading and to think of a 125 year old destination is still innovating and, and blazing a trail somewhat in the game. Pretty proud of that. Lonnie. Here we go. Done deal. Max, pleasure, man. Like a lot of fun. Good playing with you. Good being with Tom. you. Tom? Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Honor to play with you boys out here. Next up, we're spending some time with some pigs. Oh, we got belly time. <laughs> we got belly time. <laughs> some kids. How do you feel about that, Ashley? I'm disappointed. It's okay. <laughs> And the goats take a liking to Alex's setup. <laughs> How's the audio, Alex? 